The challenge of the Yukon. On, King! On, you husky! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swift and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he... The challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Detroit's great automotive golden jubilee celebration of, by, and for all Detroiters is here. A full half-century of history on wheels is now in progress with a nationwide recognition of the automotive industry's golden jubilee. We join the entire nation in saluting the great industry which has made Detroit the automobile capital of the world. Zeke Peters had lived alone for years in the wilderness of the Yukon near Bear Creek. He was a dour, silent man who had no friends and wanted none. As Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police entered Zeke's cabin, he knew he wouldn't be welcome. Do you mind if I sit down? Help yourself. Thank you. Zeke, uh, did you ever live in Toronto? Mm, what if I did? You have a brother living there, haven't you? Maybe. Perhaps talk more if I say I know all about you. You know all about me? You left Toronto because you were suspected of committing a crime. How did you find out? Your brother's been trying to find you for a long time, Zeke. He never stopped working to clear your name, and the real criminal's been found. My brother did that? Yes. I never wrote him. I was sure he thought I was guilty, just the way the rest of them did. Everybody thought so. But they couldn't prove it. I couldn't stand it any longer. Everybody avoiding me. Everybody suspicious of me. I hated them all. Hated the world. And that's why you lived out here alone like this? Yes, that's why I never made friends. I just worked to get money to go back and prove I wasn't guilty. Your brother did that for you. I was wrong about Jack. He must have believed in me after all. Well, now I can go back and repay him. Repay him? Nobody knows it, but I have a fortune hidden right in this cabin. I struck gold two years ago, and I've been working my claim ever since. Mm -hmm. I uh, never put my gold in the bank because I didn't want anyone to know about it. A little dangerous, isn't it? Everybody thinks I'm a little crazy, I guess. Nobody ever bothered me. But now I can go home. Take fifty thousand dollars with me. Fifty thousand? Well, don't tell anyone about it until you're safely out of here. Don't worry, I won't. Sergeant, I'm sorry I was so mean acting when you came. <laughs> That's all right, Zeke. Well, King, guess we'd better go. You going north, Sergeant? Oh yes, I have to go up to an Indian village about forty miles north of here. I'll be back in a few days. Good luck, Zeke. Two men were camped beside the trail leading to Selkirk. Jake Reed grumbled as he fried some meat over the fire. Suppose I'll have to do all the work from now on. Don't see why you couldn't be more careful. If you'd have waited till I found my mitten, my hand wouldn't have froze. You're always in such an off-hard hurry. If you weren't such a rattle brain, you wouldn't have lost it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a rattlebrain, but I'm showing you how to get some money quick, ain't I? Yeah, you gotta see it first. And if I go all the way down to Bear Creek for nothing, there won't be enough of your brain left to rattle. Don't you worry about the gold. I know old Zeke has plenty. I just couldn't handle the deal alone. I don't see how you can be so sure it's hidden in the cabin if you search it the way you say you did when he was out. It's gotta be there. He never puts any in the bank. I found that out. Yeah, I hope you're right. We'll make the old codger tell where he's hidden it. He's a tough old character. That's why I came all the way up to Selkirk to get you. Thought you'd know how to handle him. I'll handle him all right. 
Hey, wait a minute. Why couldn't we set fire to his cabin? He'd get the gold out fast enough then. Yeah, might be worth trying. If we get started when he's out cutting wood or something, have it going good when he gets back. Yeah, that's the idea. Hey, here comes somebody. Yeah, it's a dog team. Whoever it is, don't ask him to camp us. You think I'm crazy? Hello? Hello? Sergeant Preston. What do you think so far from home? Oh, uh, I've just been up to Selkirk uh, buy some things. This is a friend of mine, Jake Reed. How are you, Jake? Hello. What happened to your hand, Joe? Why is it wrapped up? I lost one of my mittens. My hand froze a little. Nothing dangerous. Haven't you another pair of mittens? No, I didn't bring an extra pair. This burlap will keep my hand from freezing again. Well, I have some mittens right here on my sled. Yeah, dangerous going without. Oh, don't bother, Sergeant. Sir. I can get along. I have a couple of extra pair. Here they are. Don't bother returning them. Well, thanks. These will be fine. I've worn them a lot, but they're warm. Don't you uh, want to stop and have some supper with us? Well, no thanks, Joe. I'm trying to get to that Indian village, the site of Selkirk, by tonight. I had my supper anyway. Well, thanks again for the mittens. They'll they'll help a lot. Bye. On, King! On, King! Bye! <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad that Mountie is going in the other direction. It was late the following day when Joe and Jake watched Zeke's cabin from the shelter of spruce trees nearby. There goes Zeke now. He's leaving the cabin. Maybe we'd better search it first before starting a fire. No use doing that. I tried it once. He's gone over the top of that hill. Is that where his claim is? Yeah, yeah, down near the creek. Come on, hurry. Yeah. Here we are. Sure, and don't start the fire near the doorway now. We want him to be able to get inside. Quit giving silly orders and help me. Hey! Hey, you down there! Yeah? What do you want? Is that your cabin back here over the hill? Yes. It's on fire. We saw it from the trail. On fire? Oh, no! Hurry, maybe we can save it. My partner's trying to get it out. I, I've got to stop it. I, I've got to save something. I guess you better save everything you can. It's, it's got too good a start. Jake! Too late. You can't save it. The plane's got too much of a start. I'm going in. i got to get something. You better hurry, mister. Them walls are going to collapse. Come on, Jake. We're going in after him. I'm coming. We'll help you get things out. <laughs> the smoke's getting thick. This fat wall... Here in this opening, it's my gold. Help me. Help me carry, carry these bags. Out. The whole wall is burning. Hurry. These bags are scorched. Here, take them. Joe, you you carry these out. I'll, I'll take some, too. Out. This wall is hot. You better get out. The whole wall's on fire. It's going to collapse. Just, just a few more. Here they are. I, I, I can't see. My eyes get over. I'll get up. Oh. Oh, my hand. There, that's all of them. Come on, get out of here. <coughs> yeah, we made it. Did you get all the gold out? Yes, we, we got it all, I think. Both my hands are burned. Joe, it's up to you. Let me count these bags. One, two. Hurry, Joe. Three, all right. Four. Oh! Uh, that'll take care of him. Now we got to get him back in the cabin before it falls. I can't carry him alone, Jake. You've got to help me. But my hands are burned. So are mine, but we got to do it. Come on. The following day, Sergeant Preston was nearing Bear Creek when Jim Travers, a trapper, hailed him on the trail. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Okay. Hello, Huskies. Hello, Jim. How are you? Well, if you're going into town, I'll go along with you. Why, well, I thought I'd stop at Zeke Peters' cabin for a minute first, just off the trail here. You mean the old man who had the claim over near the creek? Yeah. Why, his cabin burned down yesterday. And he was in it. What? Yeah. I was coming home late and saw some smoke. There was nothing left of it when I got there. I covered his body with branches. Well, that's too bad. Come with me, Jim. I want to look it over. Nothing left of the cabin, as you said. Yeah, I 
I wish I'd have got here sooner. I might have been able to pull him out of it. Poor Zeke. Jim, you didn't find any gold in the ashes, did you? I know. Zeke had some, but there's certainly nothing here. (laughs) What is it, King? He's got something in his mouth. What is it? Give it to me, fellow. What? It's my mitten. Your mitten? But you've got your mittens on. Mitten I gave away two days ago. I think we'd better look the place over. These tracks may not be Zeke's. You think somebody may have robbed him? Look here, Jim. This looks like blood here in the snow. Yeah, it does. And look over here. Someone brought a dog team here behind these bushes. Well, it wasn't me. Zeke didn't have any dogs. There wasn't anybody here when I came. There's something funny about this. What are you going to do, Sergeant? I'm going to follow their trail. I'd like to see what happens when I return this mitten. Picking. <laughs> For three days, Sergeant Preston raced over the trail in pursuit of Jake and Joe. With his powerful lead dog, King, setting the pace, his dog team, the fastest in the North Country, covered the miles in record time. On, King! On, you husky! On the third day, just as dawn was breaking, the Mounties stopped his team beside their camp. The men were rolled up in their furs beneath the shelter of spruce branches. Joe sat up as he heard Preston's voice. Jake, wake up. Somebody's here. What? Who is it? Well, good morning, Joe. What are you doing way out here? Oh, it's you, Sergeant Preston. We seem bound to meet each other. Where are you going? You didn't go back to Bear Creek after all, did you? No, no. We uh, decided on a shortcut. We came the other way. We're going to my brother's place in Lost Valley. Did you freeze your other hand, Joe? And you, Jake, you seem to have hurt yours some way. I, uh, I cut it. Better let me look at it. Might be infected. It's all right. I don't need any help. Let me see that hand. And yours too, Joe. I suppose you have a good excuse for that burn on your face. Say, what is this anyway? You've got no right... Unwrap that bandage or I'll rip it off. All right. Here. You satisfied? I burned it getting a stick out of the fire. Yes, I'm satisfied. Now open that pack there beside you. You listen here, Mounty. You've got no right poking your nose out. My dog doesn't seem to like the tone of your voice. Watch him, boy. Now open that pack and be quick about it. All right, all right. There's nothing there but some gold that Jake's taken to his brother. See? And how did these bags get scorched? We just put the pack too near the fire. You didn't get them from Zeke Peter's cabin while it was burning, I suppose. I told you we didn't go near Bear Creek. Then how did this mitten I gave you the other day get there? That's not the mitten. I never saw it before. You can't deny it, Joe. You rattled brain ought to bust that thick skull. But, Jake, he's got no proof My of anything. My dog brought me the mitten because he knew it was mine. No use denying it, Joe. You're both under arrest. You might have got away with this if it hadn't been for King. Good work, fella. Hats off to the past, coats off to the future. That's the official slogan of Detroit's great Civic Automotive Golden Jubilee celebration. It was just 50 years ago that the first automobile was sold to an adventurous customer. Now, just half a century later, the entire nation is paying a deserved tribute to the great industry which has led Detroit along the path of progress to become the automobile capital of the world. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time. Hugh Holder speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.